Hello, Ted. Are you there? Good. In 1983, my dad ran a computer club. It was for the Texas Instruments TI-994A. The computer was quite a simple thing. It had a floppy disk drive. It had a cassette recorder to load software. It had a dot matrix printer that feeded out paper at one line per minute. And the purpose of the club was to bring like-minded people together to discuss how they were using it now and how they would use it in the future. We didn't have an email back then, so all the contributions came through letters and uh, snail mail post. And the question looking back at that time that my dad had is the same as I'm having now. How will that technology be useful for the future of business education? Fast forward to now, and the expectation is this could very much be the future of how we learn in business. But the question I have is how useful will it be? And are we really ready for it? Hello everyone, and, and welcome today to this live event. Um, firstly, my apologies for the video. The reason I've shown you that is that represents an existing state of global business education today. We at the moment as educators have to cater for the masses and what we do is we use live streaming technology like this such as Skype for Business, um, Webex, webinars to be able to communicate and help people learn from the four corners of the world. But I'm pretty sure you'd feel quite disappointed if I showed you that for the next 15 minutes. You're here today at a live TEDx talk. You've seen 14 speakers, you're sitting with like-minded people, and I believe that the power of that human interaction is very important to you, it's at your core. And so after this event, you will probably go away, have a coffee and discuss this and maybe watch this online again. I've been an educator for about 20 years. I've worked in public sector with governments uh, across 32 countries. I've worked with British ambassadors. I've also even started in retail, working with pet food and teaching people how to replenish shelves on produce items such as peppers and, um, and courgettes. And through that time, uh, more recently, I'm an educator in technology and the business of technology. And through that time, it's quite interesting to see education evolve. The learner and educator of today hasn't really changed that much, surprisingly. Let's take an example of the learner. The learner in the classroom at the moment has several options to learn, which we call blended learning. So, for example, if the learner wanted to uh, improve their customer service skills, they would get options of an e-learning course, which would take them through a computer and a multiple choice test. They would get books, to complement their reading on customer focus or customer skills. They would even get uh, a coach or a mentor that nowadays can either be on site in an office or through the means of Skype communication. But still today, on top of that, we use travel. And we still put people in classrooms in different geographical areas of the world. And that takes time, that takes money, but that's important because people value the face-to-face -face interaction with others. The same sort of concept exists for me as an educator. I still have to use flip charts for the classroom. I still have to purchase supplies such as markers. I still have to travel and take the time to go to different time zones, to meet masses of people, to teach them um, information face-to-face. And on top of that, I still will have to prepare e-learning documents, design those, keep them up to date and refresh the content. All of which takes time, takes money and impacts productivity. So you'd think now that technology would be able to help us in education. Can I just get a quick show of hands as to how many people here own a mobile telephone? Okay, 
That's probably what I was expecting. And in 1997, in a house of six guys at university, I was one of those first adopters of a mobile telephone. And interestingly now, everybody seems to have one or two of those. So um, a quick poll again. Who here has had an experience with virtual reality? Yeah. And in today's, today's society, most of us probably have had some encounter with that. And it will do, because back in 1991, virtual reality entered the global market and people became more aware of it. We used to have very, very big plastic headsets to wear over our heads and eyes. We had gaming simulators where you could refuel an aircraft in virtual reality. And as a 10-year-old boy, I was very excited to try that for the first time. My vision was I was going to be a pilot like Tom Cruise from Top Gun refueling like one of the biggest aircraft in the world. I was very excited to be able to do that and experience that. But I was bitterly disappointed because at that time, with all of that plastic on my head, when I entered the virtual reality world, my vision of what that would be like, technology did not meet it. And as a result, the polygons, the slowness of that technology really disappointed me. And it seems across the globe, disappointed everyone else. And as a result, VR failed. Fast forward a bit to the now, and VR has really emerged as a prominent technology in the global gaming market, but also in the educational space as well. Headsets such as Oculus Rift, the Vive, HTC, are just a, a few of the hardwares that are out there that complement the VR technology. And I remember asking the question of a colleague in London who's in learning, and I said, in business education, is VR really being used? And the answer surprised me. Yes, it was. In fact, for him as an engineer, it was a very, very useful tool for business education. And you're going to see why. Because this scenario represents uh, a coach or a mentor or a teacher who is based in Scotland. He's in the yellow. And he is teaching somebody in Dubai how to put a satellite together in the middle of a desert. Of course, it still looks a bit cartoon-like, but the, the actual uh, parts to the satellite and the machinery are very, very accurate to what it would look like in reality. And as, as, as a result of that, what the person in Scotland is able to do is he, he is able to coach and mentor and teach and train and observe this student in Dubai and how he puts the parts together, how he twists the nuts and bolts. And as a result, they have a satellite together with full instruction that has taken no time at all to set up, has saved on cost, has removed um, the necessity to travel from Scotland to Dubai or Dubai to Australia, and, and so on. And so VR is very, very useful in that training experience now. As exciting as that is, though, the virtual reality world space is still virtual. And in my mind, in education, I would need something else to help with this. And so augmented reality is now becoming very, very prominent in the workspace. If you don't know what augmented reality is, just imagine that virtual reality concept being brought into real life in what you see now. It's a combination of virtual reality and reality. So I remember the days of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the film, and Mary Poppins, for example. And in there, that was the first time that they were bringing cartoons to interact and mix with the actors on screen. And again, as a child growing up, that looked extremely effective. Uh, to see Roger Rabbit, like meeting with Bob Hoskins and taking his hat off, that was incredible. And augmented reality is starting to achieve that. Now, the way that you use augmented reality is you have a mobile telephone or you have a, a visor or a headset that just looks like a piece of glass and you can see everything that you see now. And some examples of how this actually works when you put a visor or a headset on is that you can stand in a conference room and be able to interact with a 3D hologram of a building, of a heart, 
of um, some medical device, of a car, but you don't all need to be there at the same time. And so two humans could be in one room together, but then another 10 could be in their lounges or their kitchens or their Starbucks coffee shops, interacting with the same thing that you're seeing, seeing the same people that you're seeing, talking uh, and learning together. Another example of AR out there is hollow art, where now, instead of drawing on pieces of flip chart paper or whiteboards or tablets, we actually have the ability to draw within our space, within our reality. And so I could put my name up there and be able to walk around it and other people will be able to see that art as well. And in learning and in education, that's complementing creativity. Another example that is interesting and now we can all do is with the iPhone 10. AR kit got released. There are other providers out there. And what they are now able to do is develop apps and designs to complement augmented reality. And that is very exciting for education. So in thinking about just some of those examples, what's going to happen in business education with the learner and the educator? Well, um, all of these concepts of flying, of Skype for business, of e-learning, of books, of audiences are going to change. So where does that leave the learner and educator for the future in business education? Well, all these tools that currently exist will probably disappear, but they won't disappear altogether. They'll amalgamate into AR. They'll amalgamate into our augmented reality. And so your office tools, your desktops, your e-learning, your Skype for business, your, your books, your PDFs, even the courses that you normally would attend will now be placed into that visor, into that headset. And for the educator, that's a real powerful thing for me too. No longer will I need to travel to 42 countries around the world to educate people. I'll be able to do that from the comfort of my home and from my office and still be able to offer you that value of learning to the audience that wants it. We'll also, as educators, be able to like, reach people we've never reached before in a powerful way. And in this day and age where education is even more important, to be able to do that effectively um, through AR is going to be a powerful experience. Imagine also, if you will, in business education, seeing things like this. It looks a bit like Minority Report, with that Tom Cruise film again, where people are moving hands around and filtering images and placing things on the walls. But that is now possible. We can actually do that now. And so imagine being in an office where you don't have to have a computer anymore. Imagine don't having, that you don't have to have um, a meeting room or a classroom because you can actually do this technology and talk and interact through, um, through the HoloLens or through other visors. And if you don't think that's real, it is real. There is an office in America at the moment where people physically go into that office they wear these visors and their headsets and they're actually moving their hands around in very strange ways because that's what they're seeing in their visors. And no computers exist in that office, no monitors exist in that office, everything has become AR. And it seems to be working. But interestingly, they're still in the office and that power again of human interaction is extremely important. So final possibilities, just other ideas. There's a company out there called Magic Leap who have invested heavily into VR and AR concepts. And these are just a couple of ideas of blueprints of what they thought this technology will do. And as a retail educator, a previous retail educator, imagine that person that needs to replenish a shelf. Imagine the customer experience um, that they need to help in, um, in their training. No longer do they need a classroom, no longer do they need to travel. They could put one of these headsets on, walk onto the shop floor, and while being taught by a coach or mentor about how to replenish or how to ticket or how to create available products, they can do this real time while doing the job. And on top of that, 
their customer experience is enhanced because when a customer will talk to them, they'll be able to help them. Augmented reality can flag up availability problems with a, 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 an item of produce, for example. If the customer asks, what's the nutritional value or is this gluten free? That will pop up again on their visors and their headsets. And so it complements a learning experience and I think it will speed it up. You may now be asking with this AR technology and to sort of conclude, what is it doing in a technology business that I educate in? Well, four years ago, um, I made a massive assumption. I made an assumption that walking into an office with people fixed to computer screens and headsets and making and instant messaging each other, that in actual fact, their method of learning would be technology. But when I sent a survey out to 600 people in this global business, the results surprised me. It challenged my assumptions because only 9% of people wanted e-learning and webinars to complement their learning. The method that was most effective for them in their minds was face-to-face -face and combined with that experience. It's quite conclusive that in seeing those statistics in technology and planning the future of education, the experience will be complemented with augmented reality. However, with emotion, with sitting next to someone here in a TED talk, with having that power of human connection, there will always be a need for that to exist. So looking at the results from technology there in a business and me as an educator, I thoroughly believe that augmented reality will certainly be a part of our future. It enhances the learning experience, it helps us scale, it reduces cost, but it's going to make that learning experience even more interesting, creative and enhancing for the learners. But in saying that, I strongly believe that AR or technology will never ever replace the power of human interaction. You're all here for the TED Talk today. You're all wanting to go to live concerts. You're all wanting to meet like-minded people and have that connective experience. And as a result, human interaction and the human element of education will never ever disappear. Thank you.